Hey everybody, Fred here at PLCGurus.net. So I wanted to just take a minute before we get started into this video um, to number one say hello. Um, usually I'm, I'm stuck behind the computer screen here and we don't get this one-on-one -on -one time very often. So again, uh, I wanted to say hello, I wanted to reach out and I want to start building that relationship with all of our community members that are out there. I've met some really great people to date and our community is growing exponentially and our YouTube channel here as well is starting to really take off so I'm pretty proud of that I did want to point out if you haven't done so I know you found me here on YouTube please do head on over to our companion site we are quickly becoming the fastest and largest growing community of professional engineers technicians and technologists who all share that passion for industrial automation and controls so if you haven't done so please head on over to the website uh, become a member registration is completely free uh, get engaged with other community members there's some great people some awesome people on the forums and whatnot so please I encourage you to do that and if you're over there and you're interested you could pick up one of these cool plcgurus.net t-shirts and show your official support for the community and of course whatever you do over there helps really what I'm doing over here as well so I do thank you for that too also if you haven't already done so please do consider subscribing to the channel and I do want to start engaging with you in some comments so if there's something I'm not doing or not covering or something you'd like to see me do better if it's in my wheelhouse to provide that for you I'll work on it I'll certainly consider it and try to get it out to you uh, but please let's start the communication going too in the comment section below on this video so a couple of things one check out the website become a member over there subscribe to the channel give us a thumbs up ring the bell give us some comments let's get those discussions going what do you want to see what do you want me to do next those types of things so again this is Fred let's get into this next video where I'm going to show you how we can actually dynamically monitor the CPU state in our little test project application there so I'm excited to get going let's get started Hey everybody, Fred here. So as you know, we are now in the seventh installment in our C-Sharp HMI video series here on YouTube. And in this video, like I discussed uh, in the previous segment, is we're gonna go ahead and code in uh, the CPU state properties here. So we're gonna dynamically monitor the status of the CPU state for whether the status is okay, uh, whether we're in a major or minor fault, and the actual key position of the controller so again we said we're going to do that dynamically which means that we have to continuously monitor the state of the cpu and if you recall i'm just going to go to the code view here if you recall from the previous videos we actually set up an, a second thread here let's just go find it um, right here this trigger update thread uh, or tag update thread here so we actually can fork off a second thread here and we can use that thread to do our plc read calls that way our gui our front end does not get impacted by any dwells or delays or hang-ups in the actual cpu read so like i said threading becomes very very important when you're developing these larger scale hmi projects so what i want to do now is i want to go ahead and implement the cpu state read so we did the cpu uh properties up above here we really should start commenting this so let's go ahead and just do that quickly so this is going to read the cpu properties and remember this is not something that we need to do dynamically because this is reading the actual the firmware uh, the product type the serial number the program name these things aren't likely to change so it's sufficient that we make a void call we do it once when we launch the application we read in all of those properties and you know we're done because uh, you, you know you're not going to anticipate these things to change dynamically at runtime so that's that's fine there and let's just make a little note on this i want to start commenting our code here a little bit so this is a separate thread from the form thread from the main form thread that will allow us to make our cpu calls maybe we'll just put it down here our cpu tag reads and writes 
okay? Just something. I mean, it's, it's always good practice to comment your code. I mean, we're just we're, we're, we're just throwing stuff in there. Uh, but again, it's always good practice to start separating, segmenting, and commenting your code, right? So maybe we maybe we should just do this. Um, this this will connect us to the given controller, and maybe in brackets we'll say PLC. Um, just something simple, right? I mean, we're not. We're, I mean, we know what we're doing here. Uh, this will disconnect us from the given controller and again maybe we'll say CPU or PLC keep it consistent whoops there we go okay so for this next part so remember we had that special um, rename or that in gear provides a mechanism very easily for us to grab this information so when we do the state call it has a very similar uh, type name and, and, and it's and it's basically the dollar sign CPU underscore state, okay? And like I said, InGear makes it very, very f easy for us to, to do these calls. And because they're so common, they've built in some mechanisms that simplify it for us, okay? So what I do want to do in this video, I mean, we haven't, I mean, we've been bad, we've been using some bad programming style here, I'll admit. I mean, there's nothing worse than looking at a piece of C-sharp code that somebody has written and they've programmed everything in the main form class. I mean, this is not what you want to do. What you want to do, to do for any large scale application is to start thinking in an object oriented mindset and basically creating these objects of like or similar type tasks that you need to perform and group those into its own class. I mean, for dependency pointing, for uh, DLL type updating and switching, these all become very, very important things for large scale uh, or, or production suitable type applications. Again, I'm not teaching you how to do object oriented programming in C Sharp, but I don't think it's gonna hurt either if we take advantage of the object oriented programming structure. So what we're gonna do is create a separate CPU state class that's gonna do all of the uh, state handling for us. So let's get into that right now. So let's head on over to our test project, our main root directory here under our solution. And I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna go add a new class. And let's call it CPU state and we'll click add. So now we have a brand new class that is our CPU state and it's gonna be our handler for the CPU state read. So it's gonna return all of the um, textual strings based on what we actually read from the CPU. So let's just start coding this, okay? So I'm gonna go public class. We're gonna make it a public class so that everyone can access it. And I'm gonna create an integer 32 array to hold the state values that the in gear call is going to return to us, okay? And let's go ahead and now implement the constructor. And we're gonna make it a constructor that we are required to pass in the actual CPU state value. So we're gonna do the read from the form class because that's where our uh, in gear logics class libraries are added to the namespace okay and then once we have that array of values we're going to pass it in here to do the parsing and figure out what to return to the form to display for the user okay and again this is going to make good sense once we get it going so i'm going to go ahead and just implement this code here And you know what? I have quite a bit of code to input here. So why don't we take our little musical interlude while I type this in at fast speed. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and talk about it. So sit back, enjoy the music, watch the code I'm typing, and then we'll come back and explain it in a minute.
Okay, so it looks like we have a couple of errors here. So I've missed some semicolons somewhere. Ah, see that's a nice thing about Visual Studio. I mean, using a proper IDE is indispensable for finding these little types of errors. Uh, you can see I forgot to terminate these strings here after the breaks, and that should be good. So let's just quickly take a look at this class and what it is we actually did. So we've created a state, a CPU state class that's going to be a separate object to do all of our um, handling and parsing and figuring out what exactly is going on so that we can send the proper message to the form. Okay, so I've created a default constructor. Constructor, sorry. We'll just call this default constructor. And it's gonna accept an int32 array of state values, okay? Now this is corresponding to the in-gear documentation. Please feel free to, to read up on this stuff. Uh, however, if you wanna just take me at my word here, uh, you'll see that we'll get this going. So again, we have a private state value variable to hold the passed in CPU state values from the uh, CPU state read we're gonna be performing over in the form uh, that we haven't actually implemented yet. Okay, that'll be in the next part. So here we go. So we got our CPU state value, initializing our private variable here. And then I have a couple of getter methods just that are basically gonna perform the operations. Once we create the object, instantiate the object, and, and store the state value of the CPU read, the state read, we are going to go ahead and if we want to know what the okay state is, of the CPU, we'll do a call to this get CPU OK state method. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that now internally stored state value, and we're gonna look at the first element or index in that array, and then we're gonna use a switch statement that basically is gonna test what value that memory or array location is holding. So again, this is all corresponding to the in-gear documentation, um, but if it's a zero, we're gonna say the CPU OK state is solid red. If it's a one, flashing red, uh, firmware update, communication fault, awaiting connection, configuration bad. I mean, we're not gonna test all of these states, obviously, uh, because there's just too many here, but I assure you that these will work for you if you wanted to implement them, okay? And well, I mean, we're gonna test a few of them, of course. So that's for the OK state or the CPU OK state. That'll correspond to the LED on your, on your uh, processor itself, okay? And then we'll just return that CPU state string back to the caller, okay? Which is gonna be from our form class. All right, I hope that's clear. And now next thing here, oh, key switch. We don't want the key switch. This is the fault state. Fault state, not the key switch state. Okay, so now we also have a get method that will return us the fault state. So again, using the switch statement, we're gonna look at now the first element in the state value array and test it against these different cases. So if it's a zero, it's a no fault, minor fault, recoverable, minor unrecoverable, major unrecoverable, major unrecoverable fault. And again, we'll return that back to the calling form. And then finally, the CPU key switch state here. Uh, again, same setup, we're using state the array index two into the state value that's being passed into this object when it's first instantiated. And then we're gonna test case one, two, and three. That corresponds to run mode, program mode, and remote run mode, respectively. Okay, so that's how we're gonna go about um, handling some of the parsing and, and some of the heavy lifting, I guess, associated with uh, sorting out what was actually returned from our in-gear call to read the CPU state values, okay? So I'm realizing we're encroaching on that 20 minute mark and I generally try to keep the videos uh, to 20 minutes or less. Uh, so I think we're gonna halt this one. I think this is a good time to stop on this video now that we've created our CPU state object. And in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and code in everything necessary to instantiate that object, do the CPU read, and hopefully pass the correct messages to our form, and everything hopefully will go as planned. So again, I hope you found this video informative. Please head on over to our companion website at https colon backslash 
backslash plcgurus.net. Become a member of what is quickly becoming the largest and fastest growing community of professional engineers, technicians, and technologists who all share that passion for industrial automation and control systems. So again, please subscribe. Please like the video. Please include a comment in the comment section below. Ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.